week two of the Easter and Spring STEM challenges. Today we are doing Egg Hanst, which is a classic egg drop. I do have a few new ideas to keep it a little bit fresh and interesting. Before I get ahead of myself, let's check out the materials and the STEM challenge cycle. This is the STEM challenge cycle you should follow for every challenge. I've defined each step in another video. I've added a pop-in card to that video here, as well as a link in the description. Now, if you're trying to avoid Easter themes in your classroom, there really isn't anything Easter about this challenge other than the fact that we're using eggs. And I do have one example here where I've used Easter grass, but you don't need to do that. If you're doing this the classic way, then you are probably using real eggs, and you can either use those raw or you can hard boil them. Now, if the idea of using real eggs bums you out, either because of the mess or just wasting the food, I completely get it. So in these examples, you'll see that I use plastic eggs and I fill them up with beans ahead of time. And another option to avoid mess if you are using real eggs is just to have the students enclose their designs in a Ziploc bag or a plastic bag prior to testing. And that should contain all the goo. Now because this is a classic challenge, in fact I remember doing this myself as a student in kindergarten, you're not going to want to tip your hand ahead of time to let the kids know what you're going to do because they can look online on YouTube and other places to see designs that are already done and that will stunt their own creativity and innovation. So the base criteria and constraints keeping it very simple, you want to build something to protect an egg so that when you drop it from a given height, it doesn't crack. When I was in kindergarten, we took that one step further and made it so that once we saw all the eggs that survived the drop, we weighed them all and the lightest design won. Another way you can handle that is just to add a criterion that the total weight of the design plus the egg must be no more than twice the egg, in which case you would weigh the egg first, obviously, so the students know how much they're working with. challenge a little bit more difficult, there are several things you can do. One thing is to increase the height that the egg must survive a drop from. You can require that the student's design actually house more than one egg and protect them both from being cracked. Another thing you can do is require that some part of the egg actually be visible. probably wouldn't add that one for younger students. I allow them to completely contain their designs. Of course, we can also tighten up that criterion about the weight. Instead of saying that your design can be twice the weight of the egg, maybe it can only be 25% the weight of the egg. Particularly if you have older students, this is a great opportunity to do an impossible challenge. Since the egg drop is a classic, they're probably familiar with it on some level. It won't be completely new to them. So what you can do is make it an impossible challenge by giving them a set of materials that even you don't think will work. And this design is actually inspired by such an impossible challenge. We have just a few craft sticks, a pipe cleaner, so maybe two pipe cleaners, and some rubber bands and a lunch bag. I don't know how it's going to perform yet, we'll have to wait and see. When it comes time to measure the results of their designs, I recommend not just doing one height drop that's very large. Instead, I like to set up three incremental heights. This gives students more opportunities to be successful at different levels. test their design at ever increasing heights until their design finally does fail and the egg cracks. If there are any designs that are successful at every height, you can continue to test until the failure point of the design, or you can then challenge the students to come up with another design that is maybe 75% of the weight of the first design and see if they can still make one as successful. To extend on this, you can choose an egg experiment. Just go online and search for egg experiments. A bunch will pop up, and you can have different groups do different ones and practice the scientific method and then, of course, present their findings. Ask the students, if they don't ask you first, how can it be that an egg is so fragile, yet it is also so strong? Why is it that a hen can sit on the egg and it doesn't break? If you're looking at tie-ins in ELA, check out Aesop's fable, The Goose and the Golden Eggs. It goes by a few different names, but if you look that up, you'll find it. Have the students read that fable and then rewrite it as a new modern version. Or you can have them do a free write on any sort of egg-related story or poem. Now you have all the basics in order to conduct this challenge in your classroom on your own, but as always, I have a resource that is chock full of goodies for you, so make sure you take a second to check it out. This time-saving resource contains everything you need, including modifications for use with 2nd through 8th graders. You'll still need to gather the simple materials, of course, but the rest has been done for you. 
You'll get a line next gen science standards, links to my STEM challenge how-to videos to help you get the most from each challenge, and the egg hands materials list. In teacher tips, you'll find premise and setup, how to increase or decrease difficulty through the criteria and constraints list, measuring results, and cross-curricular extension suggestions. You'll find an editable criteria and constraints list so you can tailor the challenge to your students. For student handouts, there are two versions, four-page expanded room for response for younger students and a two-page condensed space paper saver version. You'll also find a set of group discussion questions. In the extension handouts, you'll find egg writing as well as math extension and process flow templates. This resource is available individually and as part of the discounted Easter Spring and Mega STEM Challenge bundles. Links can be found in the description below the video. As always, if you have any photos of your students' designs or conducting the challenge, I'd love to see them. Please tag me in any social media. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I am going to post another video this week. It is called Basket Bounce. It's a STEM challenge combined with the relay race, and it is a lot of fun. Have a fabulous week. I'll see you next time.